Paul injuries back in the spotlight tonight as a local teenager recovers from a serious neck injury suffered during Friday's game. Jordan High School's Brendan Massey was carted off the field during their game against Cardinal Gibbons. He underwent surgery Saturday. And today, the school said Brandon is making slow but positive progress. Tonight, WNC and Steve Sprasia is digging deeper into who is safeguarding our kids when they get hurt on the field. He's live to tell us what he found. Steve. Well, Sharon, almost a quarter of a million boys and girls here in North Carolina take part in high school sports. And at football fields behind me like this one, well, sometimes injuries happen without warning. With all its contact between players, football can be a violent game, even at the high school level. That's one reason why the state mandates that a first responder or licensed athletic trainer stand by at all practices and games. But those trainers can be hard to come by. Part of the, the issue is uh, the location sometimes of where our schools are. You get into some of our remote areas of the state and, uh, you know, maybe people just simply are not interested in being in some of the smaller counties. And even if there's no licensed trainer at a game, first responders should be able to deal with most situations, says Tucker. They have to be CPR, AED certified. Uh, they have to have a have taken a course in first aid uh, and specific for athletics. Ambulances are not mandated to be stationed at games. If you want one, it's going to cost. Charlotte Mecklenburg, they actually pay to have a vehicle at every one of their home contests. At other games in rural areas, some EMS will do a standby. In your smaller school systems, where maybe the only high school in town, in the county, uh, it's the only thing going on Friday night, and so that ambulance will station itself. It will be the dispatch point for any medical, any medical or emergency situations that would, would occur. Uh, tonight, the High School Athletic Association tells us it's actually in the process of conducting a study to figure out how many of its member schools actually have those licensed trainers. I'm Steve Sprasia. NCN. Steve, do you know how many of the association's member schools have licensed trainers right now? Well, the association says it has about 405 member schools, and they think about 50% of those schools actually have the trainers. By the way, here in Wake County, we're told that every Wake County school has a licensed trainer for every football game and football practice. Interesting. All right, Steve. Meanwhile, six.